Now, for every good side of something, there's always going to be a bad side of something. So, I love a lot of the PR weapons, but which of the weapons actually suck? Meaning they have a design flaw where it opens them up to more attacks because they have, you know, limited range. Or just frankly, the design itself is just so stupid that like, why did they do this type of design? Red line fame. Now, in a lot of cases, Power Rangers love to do form rather than function. This particular example, the Lion Fang from Wild Force, where it looks cool that it's actually a two-piece weapon. The thing that I really don't like is that it's a very close quarters weapon. And for the most part, it doesn't really do much. Now, of course, the Wild Force Rangers also have their Crystal Sabers, which is a small weapon and whatnot, but it can do fairly other things. The Lion Fangs are pretty crummy in distance, but not only that, it also actually risks the Rangers. Now, a lot of the monsters will attack, you know, the weapons. Now, the problem with the Lion Fangs is that they're actually a part of his hand. So now if the weapons are attacked, his wrists and hands are potentially screwed. So if a monster wants to eat them, he screws his hand. If they shoot at him, he screws his hand. Well, it's not the worst weapon out there. And it's a testament to the other weapons Cole gets later on, which are blasters and a bow and arrow system. Rescue injector. Now, I love the rescue bird and I have no problem where weapons and other things have different secondary features to them. And in this case, the rescue injector is a really cool uh, item Dana can use where she can help people get, you know, healed. You know, in Power Rangers, you know, people can get gravely injured. You know, you can lose limbs, you have open wounds, and Dana's the field medic. Of course, she needs to have all kinds of things to help people. The problem is all the other rescue weapons from the rescue bird uh, have offensive and defensive capabilities. While the other four rangers have something to do, whether it can open a door, defend themselves against a monster, the rescue injector cannot do anything. So I really hated this weapon because Dana, if she doesn't have her sidearm or doesn't she have her V-Lancer, she's kind of screwed if she only has her rescue bird components. Orion Claws. You have something from the Lights of Orion on this list? Yeah, while I love the Lights of Orion, many people love the Lights of Orion. It is a cool power-up. It gives you armor, it gives you a power-up sword. But the one thing that we always forget that it has is those stupid claws. And they really don't do anything overall. Yeah, they can extend, but how many times do we actually see the Rangers actually use the claws to do anything? It's very rare. And also their reach is fairly short. It doesn't really offer anything really positive except the overall finishers for it. Shogun Spear. Now this is one of the dumbest weapon combinations they ever came up with. And it's specifically exclusive to Samurai. Why would you connect the Mega Sword to the back of the Bulzuka and pretend that's a really good weapon? Because the main problem is, is the imbalance of weight. Now the Bulzuka is a really cool weapon on itself. It can actually already combine with the sword they use. But when you combine the, the sword and the blaster together to form this big staff spear thing, like it, it look one it looks ridiculous but also it makes no practical sense because one side is really heavy and one side is not and how can you really use the bulzuka to do anything properly in a finisher and that's the reason why they only ever did it one time in the show it's a dumb combination it makes no sense and it was just solely there because while well, we have to give the sword some other functionality because it was just added into samurai turbo star chargers now i have always a pet peeve for close combat weapons because and in most cases you know monsters usually have armor usually have maybe you know poisons things like that but the turbo star chargers are one of those close quarter weapons that are just really stupid they don't really have any offensive capabilities bar an electric attack that you have to physically touch the monster in order to pull it off. So you have to be in a very close range. And on top of it, the turbo star charges have no blade of any kind. It's simply a kind of like a battering ram of a weapon where you have to touch the monster in order to get them. Granted, she does have two weapons to help her, but I rather have the other guy's weapons over that because overall it's just an electric move versus, you know, chopping up a monster. I'm going to take those instead. Navy Antler. The same problem comes down to the Navy Antlers. Now, I like the Navy Antlers when it's combined with the Thunder Staff. Again, you have to be very close to the monster to do virtually anything. In order for it to be electrocuted, you have to physically touch it. It can't really fire from long range. And in order to pick up the monster, you have to physically clamp down on it 
and lift the person up. So now you're vulnerable to any other potential monster nearby to shoot you while you're dealing with that monster. So it only can be really done when you're guaranteed you're only fighting one monster and that monster is incapacitated. It just leaves you open to a lot of issues that I really never liked, which is why I prefer it with the Thunder Stamp combo and it made much better sense to do it that way. While all the other weapons have you know, long range defensive or offensive abilities that are much more better. Drive Claws. Now it's not the dumbest weapon, but it comes pretty close. The Drive Claws that Ronnie used in Overdrive. Because ultimately, uh, they are much like the Turbo Star Chargers that Tanya used in Turbo, but worse. Because ultimately, all they do is kick up dirt or materials and you have to smack them onto the monster. So if you're in an area that has no dirt, like say in a city setting, what does she really do? She has to physically go really close to a monster and bash him. And especially if the monster has armor, Ronnie's weapons are fairly useless. And the only real good thing that they could do is act as somewhat defensive. Because I, I assume because they are pretty strong to bludgeon monsters, they would have to have a good defense for, you know, blocking lasers and stuff. So I guess you could say that's a positive. But overall, the drive claws have almost nothing. And they're a detriment because they require the environment to be the right setting for them to actually be used 100 percent but the number one dumbest weapon that i've ever seen in power rangers is the armadillo puck first of all why is the armadillo puck given to taylor as her weapon and not either you know danny or max on top of it what the hell does it do? Because now the Armadillo Puck is part of the Wild Force Blaster that was exclusive to Wild Force. So it was a US weapon that simply was just based off all the animals that formed the Isis Megazord, which was cool, not hating them on that. But the thought process of all the individual weapons didn't really make any sense. What, you can throw it and it acts like maybe a yo-yo? at best so it what is it does it act function like connor's finisher and dino thunder we really don't know anything because they don't use the weapons individually and why would you want to carry something like this and to just what throw or there's nothing it maybe if we knew more about it it could be used as a shield of some kind or it acts as a barrier on the ranger suit but since we never saw anything i'm just taking guesses but overall for what we know about the armadillo puck it is the worst designed weapon out of all of power rangers now you do have to give power rangers credit because i've only came up with really eight weapons out of hundreds of weapons it's a personal pet peeve of mine to have really you know weapons that are only useful in close quarters because i always think you know medium to long range is a better option or of course if you have a blaster is the best option because you can be pretty much in any range because monsters unlike humans uh, they can do a lot of things uh really close up like either mind controls acid poison you know things like that they have their own weapons built into themselves so it's not like a normal occurrence where like oh you know a human can only do so much so that even if you have a close quarter weapon like i don't say a knife for example you can defend yourself from someone who's just you know wants to punch you in the face for example those are the examples of why like when it comes to power rangers certain things are kind of dumb where they just don't really think about oh like how could this really be useful in a real fight and they override that in the sense of like well this looks cool this looks interesting and then that's all they really think about past that where i wish in more cases they would think well how would this really work in real life because i think if you try to incorporate realism with the cool factor it adds to it because again it could be a practical weapon if you use it in most cases power rangers could be a practical weapon some weapons are more fantastical than others like you know Jaden's main weapon uh, in samurai you know the gigantic sword that's not realistic to use in real life but it makes sense in power ranger because they have superhuman abilities so there is some leeway now there are a couple of other designs that are weird but can still work like you know the weapons that are made out of fans you know in normal cases that wouldn't make sense in real life but in a fantastical setting it makes much more sense to use the fans because they can make wind or you know can act as mini daggers when they're close so that's why i'm okay with those type of weapons from like jungle fury and samurai as well it's just when we have these odd weapons that either require 
you know, the location to be the right setting or a particular monster has to have no, you know, other abilities on themselves. But if you're fighting more than one monster, you have a higher risk of being attacked and, you know, getting killed because of these weapons. So yeah, if you have a suggestion or topic you'd like me to cover, leave a comment down below and I may pick it for a future video.